Hello guys and welcome back to Gladly Global where we teach you all about language methodology and how to keep accountable in your language goals. Now I'm sure most of us language learners have days where we don't really feel motivated to study and there can be multiple reasons for this. You may be overworked from your uni classes as online Zoom lectures are slowly but surely draining your soul and enthusiasm for life. You may have gotten uh, scared at the thought of having a terrible, terrible orange man in one of the most powerful places in the world for another four years. You could also just have been hiding under your covers waiting for this dumpster fire of a year to end. And I don't blame you, but there may be one other problem. Your study methods. Yes, I know that on some days studying can just seem boring. It, you just can't find the energy to do it. You have so many other things you want to do and studying just feels like a chore. And you've tried multiple tips and tricks from every sort of YouTuber or influencer you've seen and you try to follow the tips, but they're, they're just not doing it for you. They, they're not helping you. But why is that? And if you're a lazy know-it-all like me, this is extremely frustrating. But luckily, I am here today to help you learn exactly why these study methods aren't working for you, for me. Everyone is predispositioned towards different kinds of learning methods. That's right, you heard it here first. We're all different, we're all special little snowflakes. And that is also why we have to structure our language learning around this fact. And so today I thought I would go through these learning methods with you and help you figure out how to use them to your advantage, depending on which one you are. Write it in the comments. So first we have to look through the eyes of Lightbound and Spada, who have written this wonderful textbook that is actually very useful and I'm using for one of my courses at the moment in university. So the first point we'll discuss is field dependent or field independent learners. So these two terms are borrowed from cognitive psychology, which as some of you may know, plays a major part in a lot of language learning, according to at least a few of the different linguists out there. And the difference between these two terms is basically where we have some people who prefer to look at things more holistically. They learn things through context. So these people are what we call field-dependent learners, where they like to take everything in in one big chunk and just absorb it and sort of sort through it on their own time. But then we have field independent learners who have the ability to sort of break things up as they see them and understand things on a more meta-contextual level. And research has shown that field independent learners tend to do better with language learning in general. And if you feel like you are personally more inclined to the field dependent side of things, then don't worry, it's not like a pass or fail stamp. Oh, no. On the whole, a certain percentage of field independent learners seem to do better when it comes to language learning. It's also how you use your brain in general. Let's dive into the three different language learning methods that I will be talking about in this video, which are all perception based. Which is to say that depending on which type of learner you are, you prefer to use different sensory organs to memorize and to learn language. First up, we have visual learners. Now, visual learners do best from just looking at something and absorbing it. Here we have the example use of flashcards. Some people do great with flashcards. They can study anything from flashcards. And while I'm very jealous of these people, I don't belong to this camp. And that is something that's taken me a long time to learn because everyone keeps pushing flashcards on everybody. But sometimes you just have to admit the fact that it's not working for me. So rather than to try and force yourself and thinking that, oh, there's something wrong with me, I can't learn through flashcards, then that's okay. You are just predisposed towards a different perception-based learning method. Then you may perhaps belong to the second category, auditory learners. You learn better through active listening and hearing the language around you, hearing native speakers, using their own language. Not only is this better for people who tend to prefer having things more contextual. So what this does is trigger a different part of your brain than the visual element does. You can simply absorb things better and you feel you remember better pitches and how they phrase things and learn natural vocabulary 
and everything else, rather than just reading it off a flat page. I know what it's supposed to sound like if I hear a native speaker say it, and I can focus my attention on the pronunciation first, and learning how my mouth is supposed to be shaped when I say these things, how to get the absolute the pitch or the tone right, depending on the language. Most languages are pitch-based, have some sort of pitch accent, so this is very useful. The third learner type we'll be talking about today is kinesthetic learners. It is basically learning by doing. While this may seem interconnected with the previous two, linguists tend to divide this into a separate category. This is good for people who prefer to take a more active approach to their language learning, where you're basically learning by doing. So role playing, for example, is a great way to accommodate this method. In this category, I would also count things like speaking with native speakers, for example. Just talking actively and just thinking on the spot and just learning by doing. Here it is also very important that you factor in all the mistakes that you'll make because that is how you'll actually learn. You have this preconception about how this grammar point works or how to say this word. You're wrong. And you learn that through actively being corrected by other people. And this is the core of the kinesthetic learning method. While I've just spent all this time going through these learning methods and you may feel really strongly about Oh, but I am this one, but I want to be over here. I want to use flashcards, they look so nice and pretty. Well, I have news for you. Researchers have been very adamant about finding out whether or not, depending on our predisposition towards these methods, if one of them would lead to a higher success rate in language acquisition. However, they're still uncertain of whether your success stems from the method you're more a disposition to, or whether it is a combination of your predisposition and also your development over time. Because while, like I mentioned, we may feel like all the flashcards just isn't for me, I cannot use them. But you can always learn, very important to know. Even if you feel like it's not for me, it's not working out, keep trying. Focus on one of the other methods for now. But at the same time, try actively to incorporate these other methods into the way you study. If the actual people who do this research say that, oh, we don't actually know if this is better than this, then take their word for it. They know. If you feel a certain predisposition towards any of these methods, that's fine. Just please, please, please realize that you cannot only do one of these things if you want to learn as effectively as possible. It is all about combining these to a certain degree. While yes, you may need to do more listening or more active speaking than you do reading, but you still need to incorporate these other factors to some degree. This is absolutely incremental for success in second language learning. Now, if you've watched this whole video and you do recognize a lot of the factors in this video and you feel predisposition towards one of these learning methods more than the others, but you're not sure exactly how to incorporate this into your own study routines, then please do join the Gladly Global Discord where we have over 100 active members and access to trained language coaches who can help you figure out what is best for you, how you should structure your individual language study for the best results. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I've missed you terribly. If you want to see more videos like this one about individual differences when it comes to language learning, then please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And I will probably see you in the next video that I make. Bye bye.